Hi guys, in the previous lecture we have covered single phase, half wave, controlled rectifier for R load and RL type and L type of load that is lecture number 10A. We have already covered in the previous lecture that is the 9A for R and RL, 9B for RL with RL and RL with freewheeling diode and 9C for RE and RLE type of load. Now in this lecture we will cover RL type of load and RL with freewheeling diode that is the lecture number 10B. So let us proceed to the first slide. See I am taking load as a RL type of load okay and this is controlled one means in, in place of uh, diode I am taking thyristor. So let us say the thyristor is triggered at an angle of alpha means the thyristor is here I am triggering the thyristor at an angle of alpha then what will happen the circuit will look like this it is short circuited because I have already triggered and this is load okay and this is output voltage. So whenever I will trigger the thyristor at an angle of alpha then the output voltage will follow the supply voltage so v naught i am getting that is equal to vs so here i am triggering the thyristor at an angle of alpha then output voltage will follow the supply voltage like this from 0 to pi also the current will be like this from alpha up to pi now what will happen after pi after pi see the concept is same after pi the inductor will have some energy see from alpha to pi the current I am getting like this because this thyristor is sorted so this inductor will get charged is it fine now what will happen after pi the after pi the voltage supply is getting reversed but this thyristor will still continue to conduct why because of this inductor inductor will have some energy so this energy will get dissipated across this R as well as it will fade back to the supply so after pi what will happen inductor will deliver its energy or you can say that its power to supply as well as some energy will get dissipated across r so this inductor will get active after pi and it will supply as well as it will get uh, some amount of energy will get dissipated across r so after pi also you will get current like this when inductor is discharging so when inductor will discharge then it will conduct and it will conduct after pi let us say up to beta so up to beta angle i am getting current after that the current is becoming zero so the moment when current will be zero that means after beta the current will be zero so i am getting zero so the moment when current will be zero at that time the thyristor will go into the reverse blocking mode because uh, at beta the supply voltage is negative it is something like this at beta supply voltage is from plus to minus it will be in negative and this thyristor is initially conducting and this is load so the moment when i naught will be zero i naught will be zero at beta then this thyristor the voltage drop across this thyristor will be minus vs apply kvl you can get get the voltage drop across this thyristor is equal to supply voltage and here the supply voltage is negative after beta so it will go into the reverse blocking mode is it fine so when it will go into the reverse blocking mode means the thyristor stops conducting and voltage across thyristor will follow the supply voltage bt is equal to supply voltage so after beta the voltage across thyristor is following the supply voltage and it will continue till when you trigger the next firing pulse till you give the next firing firing pulse and i am giving the next firing pulse from 2 pi plus alpha got it so if i will ask you what is the circuit turn of time the circuit turn of time is defined as uh, the time for which the thyristor is in reverse blocking mode so here the thyristor is in reverse blocking mode from beta to 2 pi only okay so omega tc i can write like 2 pi minus beta so tc will come out to be 2 pi minus beta upon omega from 2 pi to 2 pi plus alpha this thyristor is in forward blocking mode and from 0 to alpha also this thyristor is in forward blocking mode so we will not include this in while calculating circuit turn of time same concept i have explained you in single phase half wave uncontrolled rectifier for l load and rl type of load here also you can see that from alpha to pi v naught is greater than 0 
and i not is greater than 0 so output power will come out to be greater than 0 so in this case what is happening source is delivering power to the load means inductor is charging this concept i already explained you in single phase uncontrolled rectifier with l load and rl load now see from pi to beta from pi to beta v naught is less than 0 i naught is greater than 0 okay so p naught will be less than 0 so in this case the load is delivering power to the source concept is already discussed in single phase half wave uncontrolled rectifier if you guys are having problem in understanding this then refer the lecture number 9b you will understand what i am doing okay now suppose i have to find the extension angle so i can easily find like this for r load what is the extension angle extension angle is up to pi okay for l load what is the extension angle the extension angle i was getting like 2 pi minus alpha so for rl type of load the extension angle will belong to from pi to 2 pi minus alpha see extension angle will lie between pi this is pi and 2 pi minus alpha will lie somehow here this is the 2 pi minus alpha the extension angle will be in between pi to 2 pi minus alpha okay now how will you find the i naught max at what angle i am getting i naught max see for r load i naught max i was getting at pi by 2 you can see the previous waveform for l load i am getting i naught max at pi right so for rl type of load i naught max i will get somehow in between pi by 2 to pi see i naught max i am getting in between pi by 2 to this is pi by 2 and this is pi okay now take a note and find the output voltage so what will be the v naught average you can go with the this wave form the v naught average will be the time period is 1 upon 2 pi it is conducting from alpha to beta and it is flowing vm sin omega t d omega t so v naught average will come out to be vm upon 2 pi cos alpha minus cos beta similarly i naught average is equal to v naught average upon r as we know that average voltage across inductor is zero so you can say that i naught average will be v naught average upon r that is equal to vm upon 2 pi r into cos alpha minus cos beta this is point number second this is point number first similarly you can find the v naught rms also so v naught rms i will get under root of 1 upon 2 pi from where i am getting alpha to beta and it is following input voltage that is vm sin omega t and I square this waveform and integrate like this i will get v naught rms that is equal to vm by 2 into 1 upon pi beta minus alpha plus sin 2 alpha by 2 minus sin 2 beta by 2 okay and total whole i will take under root that is equal to 1 by 2 vm by 2 is outside from this under root got it in this way we can find the output rms voltage fifth is the conduction angle of thyristor see here con thyristor is conducting from alpha to beta so conduction angle of thyristor will come out to be beta minus alpha sixth point what is the circuit turn of time we have already found the circuit turn of time is equal to 2 pi minus beta upon omega the time for which the thyristor is in reverse bias okay so that's all about this rl type of load in the next slides i am having rl with free wheeling diode so why we are using free wheeling diode i have already explained you in the single phase half wave uncontrolled rectifier by considering rl with free wheeling diode that is lecture number 9b so i won't repeat the concept again what i am doing i am inserting one diode here okay i am inserting one diode here then what are the advantage of inserting this see initially the voltage when you trigger this thyristor at an angle alpha then the voltage the output voltage will follow the supply voltage till this thyristor is conducting okay but here after pi when you consider that free free wheeling diode then after pi what will happen this thyristor will get open circuited because this diode will start free wheeling diode will start conducting see here the concept is like this i am repeating the concept fastly you can see here this is the source voltage so from 0 to pi or you can say that from alpha to pi the thyristor will start conducting because it is triggered at alpha 
so from alpha to pi i am getting output voltage same as the input voltage output voltage will follow the input voltage up to pi now what will happen after pi after pi this free willing diode starts conducting why see here what is the voltage across this diode the voltage across this diode is vd and here the voltage across this will be v naught now after pi you can see that v naught is coming out to be negative so if you'll apply kvl here then i will get vd plus v naught is equal to zero so vd is equal to minus of v naught and after pi v naught is negative or you can say that the supply voltage is negative so the moment when v naught will be negative then this diode will get active why minus of minus v naught will come out to be plus means this vd will get this diode will get active and it will be sorted is it fine or you can say in from network point of view that we i have already explained in lecture number 9b that from 0 to pi the inductor will charge and after pi the inductor will discharge and it will free wheels across free wheeling diode okay so the moment when this uh, free wheeling diode starts conducting the supply voltage reverse means the uh, the cathode potential will become positive and anode potential will become negative in the main thyristor so this thyristor will uh, stop conducting and i have already explained you in lecture number 9b that what are the advantage of inserting free wheeling diode the advantage is the output voltage is always negative always positive v naught average by inserting free wheeling diode is always positive next p naught increases output power increases also input power factor improves these all things i have already explained you in lecture number 9b the concept will remain same only here the difference is the thyristor is starts conducting after giving gate signal that is at an angle alpha rest the concept would remain same so i won't repeat again the same concept okay so see here rl with free wheeling diode what is happening from zero to uh, from thyristor is triggered from alpha so alpha to pi the output voltage will follow the input voltage i have already explained to you alpha to pi output voltage will follow the input voltage after pi what is happening this free wheeling diode starts conducting after pi free wheeling diode starts conducting means all the energy present in the inductor will get dissipated across this resistor so i can say that after pi inductor is discharging the concept is given in lecture number 9b so we can make current inductor current or you can say that i naught current continuous initially without free wheeling diode some amount of energy is fed back to the supply and some amount of energy is getting dissipated across r but if i will uh, insert the free wheeling diode then total energy will dis, uh, get dissipated across r means the decaying rate of inductor current becomes low right so we can make the inductor current or load current continuous by inserting free wheeling diode the concept is already discussed in lecture number 9b so first watch lecture number 9b then proceed with rl with free wheeling diode only the difference is the thyristor is starts conducting at an angle of alpha okay rest the concept would remain same and i can make the inductor current that is the load current continuous somehow like this if beta will be beyond pi i can make like this by 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 uh, decreasing the time constant of this decaying um, equation i naught of t this all concept i have discussed in lecture number 9b okay now take one note first note is i already explained you that if i will insert free wheeling diode then source rms current is not equal to the i naught rms keep in mind only rl with free wheeling diode the source rms current is not equal to the load rms current for rest load the source rms current is equal to the load rms current okay second point now see the conduction angle of scr the conduction angle of scr will come out to be see scr is conducting up to alpha from alpha to pi only after that free wheeling diode starts conducting after pi the free wheeling diode starts conducting so conduction angle of scr will be pi minus alpha okay now what is the conduction angle of diode see here the conduction angle of diode if the load current is discontinuous then conduction angle of diode will be beta minus pi when load current is discontinuous now when load current is continuous then this diode will conduct till 2 pi plus alpha okay after 2 pi plus alpha this thyristor will again starts conducting so this three free wheeling diode will stop conducting so conduction angle of diode is from pi to 
टू पाई प्लस अल्फा दैट इज इक्वल टू टू पाई प्लस अल्फा माइनस पाई दैट इज इक्वल टू पाई प्लस अल्फा वैन लोड करेंट इज कंटिन्यूस गॉट इट ना वॉट विल बी द दिस इज द पॉइंट नंबर थ्री दैट इज वॉट इज द वी नॉट एवरेज वी नॉट एवरेज यू कैन कैलकुलेट फ्रॉम दिस इट इज कंडक्टिंग अप टू पाई ओनली मीन्स पुट बीटा इज इक्वल टू पाई इन आर एल लोड आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिराइव्ड यू द वी नॉट एवरेज इन आर एल लोड सो पुट बीटा इज इक्वल टू पाई इन आर एल लोड यू विल गेट वी नॉट एवरेज दैट इज इक्वल टू वी एम अपॉन पाई इन टू वन प्लस कॉस अल्फा आई नॉट एवरेज कैन ऑल्सो भी कैलकुलेटेड दैट इज इक्वल टू वी नॉट एवरेज अपॉन आर सो हियर एडवांटेज आई एम अगेन राइटिंग वट इज द एडवांटेज ऑफ इंसर्टिंग फ्री विलिंग डायड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इज ऑलरेडी एक्सप्लेन इन लेक्चर नंबर नाइन बी यू कैन गो थ्रू डैट फर्स्ट एडवांटेज इज एवरेज आउटपुट वोल्टेज वी नॉट एवरेज इंक्रीजेस सेकेंड एडवांटेज आउटपुट पावर इज इक्वल टू वी नॉट एवरेज इन टू आई नॉट एवरेज सो वी नॉट एवरेज इंक्रीज इन वी नॉट एवरेज विल रिजल्ट इन आउट इंक्रीज इन आउटपुट पावर थर्ड इज कंटिन्यूस कंडक्शन मोड इज पॉसिबल इट इज नॉट नेसेसरी दैट यू विल गेट ऑलवेज कंटिन्यूस कंडक्शन मोड हियर वी कैन मेक कंटिन्यूस कंडक्शन मोड ओके फोर्थ इज इनपुट पावर फैक्टर इम्प्रूव दिस ऑल कॉन्सेप्ट आई डिस्कस्ड इन लेक्चर नंबर नाइन बी ओके नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू एड वन मोर कॉन्सेप्ट हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द इनपुट पावर टिल नाउ फॉर फाइंडिंग द इनपुट पावर फैक्टर वट आई वॉज डूइंग आई वॉज डूइंग पी इन इज इक्वल टू पी आउट right and where p in i am getting that is equal to vs is into cos phi now see here i have input voltage vst is equal to vm sin omega t okay but because of these all rectifier circuit the source current is non sinusoidal so ist i can write like i not plus im1 sin omega t plus im2 sin 2 omega t plus so on means Because of PE circuit, the source current is non-sinusoidal. This concept I have explained you in lecture number one. Okay, so what will be the input power P in? The P input power I will get only from fundamental voltage and fundamental current. That is equal to V S into I S one. This is the this is the fundamental current. R M S value of I S one will be I M one by root two. So V S into I S one. In cos of angle between V S one and I S one, that is cos phi one. Phi one is the angle between V S one and I S one. I will get only average power only with fundamental component only because average power I will get by multiplying voltage and current having same frequency. So here the voltage is having frequency omega. So current whose frequency is having omega, I will get average power from only those frequency. Okay, so P in is equal to V S into I S one into cos phi. That must be equal to V S I S cos phi. You can see here that P in is equal to V S I S cos phi. I am taking, and here with respect to harmonic analysis, when we do the harmonic analysis, then average power I will get only with product of voltage and current with uh, having which are having same frequency. So I will get V S into I S one cos phi one is equal to V S I S cos phi. so from here i will get input power factor cos phi is equal to is1 upon is into cos phi1 and we know that cos phi1 is nothing but fundamental displacement factor and is1 upon is is nothing but distortion factor so we can write like this g into fundamental displacement factor so sometimes uh, when harmonic equation is given Like V S T is equal to this and I S T is equal to this, then in that case, the you can calculate the input power factor like this also, or you can go through like this also. P in is equal to P out. That is also the correct method. There are two method for finding input power factor. Either you go by harmonic analysis or you can go by putting P in is equal to P out. Okay. So if G is equal to one, G is equal to one for Uh, for sine wave so if g is equal to one then you can see that input power factor is equal to fundamental displacement factor that is equal to cos phi 1 okay so that's all about this lecture in the next lecture we will cover re type of load and rle type of load in control rectifier so if you guys understood the concept then please like this video and subscribe to this channel for more doubt solving you can join our facebook group